Time for course number two. I hope you enjoyed the pasta. Now, Chef Brian Nassajan from Beaker and Gray has joined us. And Brian, I have to say, one of the most exciting things for me about your food is you serve so much of it in bowls. There's something about just having that entire experience in each bite with a bowl. There's something kind of warm, something approachable, something cozy about it. it kind of takes me back to my childhood. I, I just love eating out of bowls. And we can play with our food. It's okay. Absolutely. It's okay. So tell me what is going into our bowl. Bowls, by the way, are optional for serving your brunch this morning or this afternoon, but you've gathered quite an array here. Tell us what we're making and then let's walk through the ingredients. Perfect. Okay, so this is a uh, wild mushrooms al pesto. Uh, these mushrooms that we're using here is going to be maitakis, cremini mushrooms and hanshimeshi mushrooms. Uh, we're gonna be sending out uh, shiitakes to sub out the maitakis, but it goes to show you can use any kind of mushrooms for this. Um, I like to do a rustic cut on them. I just kind of pull them apart. I'll show you afterwards when we pick up the dish. Uh, it's getting served with a kale pesto, uh, kale and pecans. I like to sub out the Wonderful. pine nuts with pecans. It's a really nice change. Uh, there's a bacon marmalade, pickled shallots, some roasted carrots, uh, and a little uh, panko gremolata that's gonna go right on top. And of course, some fresh thyme. We have to tell everybody that when we were first talking about the dish, you had asked me, I'm tempted to use bacon. I said, by all means go, yeah. because everything's better with bacon For sure. on it. Absolutely. If you are vegan, of course, leave the bacon aside. This is going to be a fabulous dish even without it. I was shocked when you first came in and I asked if you wanted a knife for the mushrooms. <laughs> you said, no way. So what is it about mushrooms that you can pull them apart? Yeah, so mushrooms, when you go to cook them, they're so filled with water, they're gonna shrink. Mm -hmm. And I, there's something rustic, something nice about getting a nice chunk of mushroom. Uh, of course, depending on the mushroom, you have to kind of know the product. You should cut them larger or smaller. Mm -hmm. There's just something, again, like I said, very approachable, very homey, very rustic about tearing your mushroom apart with your hands uh, that I think adds to the experience. Well, it was, it was beautiful to watch you working with them, and uh, especially with some of the ones that come in, in a clump or a yeah. cluster. These are also available in many markets around town, right? We don't have to go to a restaurant supply Absolutely house. not. You can get them wherever you want. Publix, Whole Foods, they'll have them. Okay. Ours are coming uh, to you from uh, a company called KSS, I think? K KSS in, Farms, yeah. In Fort Pierce. Correct. Yeah. So they have a, a mushroom farm isn't really above ground though, is it? Uh, you know <laughs> what? I haven't been actually, but I hear that it's it's not. I don't know. I don't know how their setup is actually, but it's. Yes. Uh, I hear they produce amazing. They produce amazing mushrooms. Good. So we're having a local mushroom, if you will, and then other vegetables. We've got, of course, our farms, our Bee Heaven and Tiny Farm, uh, that are providing the ingredients. So how do we begin this dish? I noticed you've had your pan heating for quite some time. Yeah, so with mushrooms, my rule of thumb is you want a piping hot pan. You get a much better sear. There's some natural sugars that occur in the mushroom. So the hotter the pan, the better of a sear you're gonna get. Like I said, there's a lot of moisture in a mushroom. So as you cook it, all that water is gonna seep out. So we have a really hot pan here. Mm -hmm. I like to use a neutral vegetable oil. You can use, we're gonna use sunflower oil, but if you can go to the store, you can get grapeseed oil, you can get uh, canola oil, you can get uh, corn oil. I like to use a non-GMO vegetable oil. They have a higher burn temp than olive oil. And again, you want that piping hot oil to get that nice sear on the mushroom. So first I'm going to break, finish breaking up these mushrooms. I don't know if you want to see yeah. that you can break them up pretty rustically. Some of these. Now these will already be broken up for you at home, but this is uh, great tutoring for future uh, mushroom preparation. And I'm right. excited to have permission to play with my food always. Yeah, so that's great. So Wide pan is good. If you have an even row of mushrooms without them overcrowding, you're going to get a better sear as well. So you want a wide pan as wide as you have. So I'm going to put the oil in the pan. We're, we should see some smoke. This pan should be pretty hot right now. As soon as I see the oil smoking, I'm going to let my mushrooms go and they're going to kind of just hang out for a little bit. Cool. Now with the oil, the mushrooms are extremely porous, so they kind of soak up a lot of oil. So don't be shy with the oil. It may seem like it's a lot of oil, but really it's not that much. So we're going to... Oh, and definitely you smoking. You need your exhaust fan in action for this one. And you say don't be shy with the oil, but I know you're not being shy with the mushrooms either no. because they will cook down. They're going to wilt and they're going to cook. So as these mushrooms are cooking, I'm going to try and let them do their thing. I don't want to stir immediately. I kind of want the oil to do its job. The bottom of the mushrooms are going to get a sear. And remember, it's going to start releasing a lot of moisture. So if I start stirring the mushrooms too soon, I'll lose the sear and I'm just gonna get steamed mushrooms. So they kinda gotta just chill for a little bit. We don't add salt until afterwards, salt extracts moisture, so we don't wanna add the salt yet. I wanna just let it do its thing for another 30 seconds or so. After this, we're gonna add our drier ingredients. Again, I want the mushrooms to keep searing, so I don't wanna add anything with moisture 
like the pesto. Um, so I'm just gonna add my carrots, my roasted carrots, and my thyme after this. So you can start seeing there's a nice color around these mushrooms. So I'm gonna give it a nice sear, a nice stir. I see they're nice and brown. So they're getting brown. They're not sticking and not burning because right. you have enough oil in Correct. Right. Okay. So we're going to add our carrots. So this is really only cooked about a minute, minute and a half. It's a fairly, I mean, mushrooms, again, they're not a very dense product, so they cook fairly quickly as long as the heat is right. Now we're going to add our thyme. We kind of let this do its thing. I'm a huge fan of cooking in layers. I always use the analogy, you know, imagine you're a group of people at a party, but no one knows each other, and you just throw a group of people in a room. It's gonna take a while for them to get to know each other, but if you start off with two people, let them get to know each other, and introduce a person at a time, then they start to bring in that person to the group quicker, they get to become better friends. Same thing with food. You don't wanna just throw in a dumb bunch of ingredients in at the same time, they're not gonna really marry as well. But if you go one at a time, they really start to layer their flavors. Okay, so now we have a decent sear on the mushroom. You see the pan is cooling down because the moisture is being extracted from the mushroom. Okay. So now we're gonna add our salt. This is about a half a teaspoon about, or so? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope you at home are having the same Im immensely fabulous aroma that we are having here in the room at Coral Gables Country Club where we're making our preparation. So I'm gonna do my bacon jam. Just a little bit goes a long way. Okay. So how did you make the bacon jam? So the bacon jam is actually pretty simple. Um, the, the key is in rendering out the fat in the bacon first. And I always go bacon in a cold pan and let it go very, very slowly because I don't want the bacon to burn before the fat's all rendered out. Uh, Once I see that the fat's been rendered out, I add a splash of vinegar because it gives it a nice, like, nice sour tang, mm -hmm. sugar, salt, and just let it cook down um, until the vinegar is kind of all cooked out. And then after it cools down, that fat and sugar kind of make a really nice marmalade for the bacon. It brings out all that nice smoky uh, kind of umami flavors out of the bacon in a really nice way. I can hear the staff. Already going, mmm. <laughs> so bacon's down. Now I'm going to go with my pesto. Okay, so you're going to cook the pesto. Oh, yeah. Pesto's, this pesto actually has a little heavy cream in it. So as it cooks down, it should really kind of simmer with all the mushrooms. And again, we're developing layers of flavor. So that's really going to blend in with the mushrooms, with now some of the bacon fat that's in the pan. Fantastic. And you used a healthy amount of, of pesto Absolutely. here. Absolutely. So, so this is our sauce, right? So again, it's, it should... It's gonna reduce a little bit because there's some cream. We kind of want to get that nice creamy, uh, almost like a risotto-y type yeah. texture. Oh, this smells fabulous. And again, this all adds to that bowl experience. We're gonna be serving it in a flat plate, but this should go in a bowl. If it was mine, I would go in a bowl. <laughs> The pan flip, last time I tried that, I had to throw out the shirt because... <laughs> so we're going to turn this off, we're there. Okay. So total cooking time here is what, five, six minutes probably? Yeah, especially if your pan's already going and you're prepping, mm -hmm. absolutely. Very simple, very easy. So we're going to serve these two. Oh, you know what? I actually missed out on my carrot sweet and sour. That's one ingredient that I have here. Okay. That so this will, the carrot sweet and sour will also come in your meal kit. And of course, we've labeled everything for you. So uh, Brian's just gonna pour this out uh, and give you a chance to see this. Now, this is also sort of like a, a ketchup kind of condiment? Or so what? this is more like a, sure, it's, 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 it's vinegar based. And we used ahi rocoto, which is a Peruvian chili, just to give it a little heat, and carrot juice. Okay. And we cook it all down, so it's got a lot of heat, but a lot of earthiness and a lot of sweet and sour notes, which will actually kind of make the, the richness of this dish kind of relax a little bit. Okay. And add this after the pesto? Uh, yeah, that's, that's after we plate it. So these are going to okay. be like little fun garnishes that are going to go on the plate. Okay. So again, imagine this is in a bowl. Okay. <laughs> 
that as is is going to be a little bit richer than we want. So this kind of little bit on top. It's spicy, so you don't want to go too much, but just a little drizzle. If you like the heat, you can go a little more. If you don't mm -hmm. want the heat, you can skip it. Just a couple little drops. And again, aside from the bacon jam that you've put in here, this is a totally vegetarian option. Completely vegetarian. But it has, because of the mushrooms, it's got a, a can I say, a meatiness to it, a Absolutely. substance to it. That's, that's the best part about mushrooms, that you don't have to eat meat to get that umami, that meatiness, to get that craving quenched. Okay, for a little bit more acid, I do pickled shallots. I'm going to use my hands with these. Here, I'll move the salt out of the way. Thank you. I imagine I'm going to want a little bite of fresh, fresh acid crunch and everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to spread them all around the plate. And lastly, I want a nice hearty crunch. So I made this kind of herb lemon zest gremolata that's going to go right on top. So everybody gets this really nice airy crunch. So in here, uh, you started with panko? I used panko, mm -hmm. butter, and I cooked the panko out in butter, and then I add lemon zest, thyme, and salt. It's very simple, but the butter kind of really lets that lemon zest and thyme carry through. It can go on everything and anything. It's necessary, and it's amazing. That's Beautiful. it. Now, is this the kind of dish that we would find at Beaker and Gray? Absolutely, in a bowl. In a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but absolutely, for sure. If it was for brunch, I would add a, maybe a poached egg right on top or something, uh, which I encourage if everyone does like eggs at home, but you're the sunny side up egg or poached egg, and it's amazing. It doesn't need it, but it's definitely a good addition. That's fantastic. Yeah. So this is our a mushroom hash. Is that the proper way? How do we call it? Sure, this? we call it a mushroom hash, wild mushroom al pesto. Uh, okay. Really, it's all those things. What a delightful dish that smells both really rich and earthy, but also light. Yeah. It's fantastic. Thank you. So one of the differences is we're looking at this dish now. You're using produce from local farms. So what's the advantage of having a locally sourced ingredient? Well, firstly, and probably the most obvious, is your quality of ingredient, right? So you know that your food isn't traveling too far to get to you. You know that you're staying true to the seasons. You know that everything is grown fresh and by a farmer who likely takes so much pride in what they're doing that they're giving you the fruits of their labor, literally. Yes. And that's love given to you so that you can cook with. Uh, secondly, there's that sense of community that you have to stay true to. You know, we are small businesses in this community. They are as well. You support each other, and that's really the thread that keeps us alive. Yeah. One of the, I, you know, I teach wine classes, and one of the things I tell people about wine, it's the same thing with this, is the person you're getting these ingredients from knows it from the ground up, yeah. literally. Yeah. They are the they're, first. They're babies. We have so many processed things in our lives, and here we're dealing with something that comes right from the people who put it together. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. What a great dish. Thank you. So that's our second course. I hope you enjoy this now, and then we'll move on to the third course in a little bit at our Farm to Fork Brunch with Chef Brian Nassajan from Beaker and Gray. Thanks Thank you. Again. Thank you.